Hey, Sales Hackers, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to sign up for the upcoming Sales Stack Conference and Sales Hacker Workshops near you. Now, on to your selected webinar. All right, so thanks for joining us uh, today. We got, again, a great webinar for you on uh, getting into the nitty gritty of account based selling. And um, it's really started to pick up lately as you know, your teams get aligned and teams get more organized and technology comes out that helps you, um, you know, in the marketing and sales uh, side of the business that allows you to really develop an account-based selling model that's going to work for your team. And so we got a, a couple of the best minds in the business on this right now that are leading teams that are doing this really well, whether on the sales or the marketing side of the business. And obviously those two things have to be really well aligned um, for, for account-based selling to work for your company. So. Um, I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves. I'm Max Ochler, CEO of Sales Hacker. Um, obviously, you're here, so you know who we are. But um, I'm going to let Jason kick it off, and then Tony, and then David and Don. Um, Jason, tell us a little bit, um, not only about yourself, but for some context, uh, 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 you know, kind of who you're selling to, average deal size, um, and size of your sales team. And this way, you know, the audience can get some context around the answers that you provide to more of the account based on questions um, that we'll get into in a little bit. Absolutely. I guess uh, my name is Jason. I am the uh, Managing Director of Sales Development at DataKnife. Uh, what we do is essentially we're a sales development uh, solution. So we help people uncover companies as well as contacts um, so that their sales team can be a lot more efficient. Um, what were the other two questions, Max? Yeah, so give us a little bit about the size of your sales team. Um, what industry and company sizes are you selling to, and maybe the average deal size would help? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the typical companies that we sell to right now are uh, SaaS-based companies, um, anywhere from a marketing automation type company to uh, an ad tech-based company. Uh, we just launched a mobile uh, solution, so we're able to track mobile technology, so we're kind of getting into a new space. Uh, which account-based selling is actually to play a pretty big part in terms of how we structure uh, our execution for that vertical. Um, our average contract size right now is uh, between, uh, depending on the product, but 12 to 15k. And the sales team just hired a bunch of new people, so we, uh, the SDR side, we're 15. But overall, we are uh, 25. How many uh, SDRs do you have per account exec? Uh, right now, we're, we're actually doing an automated. Uh, uh, round, round robin style, but if we were to pair them up, which we'd be considering, uh, so we have 15 uh, SDRs and uh, 10 AEs right now. So awesome. right now, it's, again, we're doing automated round robin through Salesforce, so we don't really pair anybody up currently. Excellent. Tony. Cool. Hey, everyone. I'm Tony Bennett. Uh, I'm from Terminus. We have an account-based marketing platform. Uh, today, my sales team is pretty small. There are six. Uh, we typically sell to any B2B company, but we find the most traction in s and to the market. Uh, exact employee size doesn't really matter. Uh, typically, technology and financial services companies. Um, any company that's a bit more forward-thinking in their marketing strategy is, is a good fit. Um, our average deal size ranges from 12 to 20K. David. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, David B. Love with Nitro. Uh, we are a, a document productivity application, and uh, we're the first and uh, and uh, largest competitor to Adobe, Adobe Acrobat in particular, with our Nitro Pro product. Um, so as far as um, who we sell to, we typically sell to companies that have a lot of knowledge workers. Uh, so that could be in the medical vertical or financial, uh, even government, uh, any organization that has a lot of knowledge workers that are dealing with documents. Sometimes we call them document factories. Um, as far as uh, the average deal size goes, we um, range from people going to our website and buying a, a downloading a an application for you know, 159 bucks to million dollar deals. So it, it spans from individuals to SMB to mid market to enterprise. And um, so 
the as far as the sales force goes, we're broken up into those. Uh, we have an online business that's handled through our marketing department, and then we have uh, an SMB mid-market and enterprise sales group. We have about 50 people in our our business sales team, and that uh, uh, ranges from having one SDR per enterprise salesperson to uh, one MDR per uh, three or four SMBs. Uh, so those are inbound lead handling SMDRs. And uh, so, yeah, so any any other questions about that? No, that's great. And um, it's definitely... You know, your your team is the largest at I think the four companies here. So um, for people listening in, if you're on the the larger end, um, you can always go on LinkedIn and look at kind of how the sales teams are broken out um, for you know the companies that are involved here today. But uh, that's some good context for people listening. And Don, um, we'll let you you know introduce yourself as well. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Don Atos. I'm uh, I'm with DataHug. Uh, we measure uh, sales rep engagement. Uh, to bring context to your sales forecasts. Uh, I manage the sales operations inside sales team uh, here. Uh, we have about uh, 10 folks uh, across all our offices worldwide. Uh, typical industry we sell to, uh, you know, my team is focused on kind of the mid-market group. Uh, so we're really focused on uh, uh, companies that are in the 200 to 1,000 range, uh, kind of the business-to-business -business, uh, model. Uh, with at least like a, a month-long sales cycle, uh, typically 10K or higher on average deal size. Uh, our, our typical deal size is uh, 25 to 35K. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll, we'll get into it right now. Thanks for the context, guys. Uh, if anybody listening has any questions along the way, just um, hit us up on Twitter with hashtag SHWebinar. And we're going to be um, asking a couple questions at the end of uh, at the end of the conversation if we have some time today. Um, if not, we'll get to them later in like an article we'll put up on saleshacker.com. But for now, getting right into it, account-based selling is not uh, a new idea, but it is being executed in a in a way where it ha hasn't been able to be executed um, in the past due to maybe um, some new forward thinking, some enhancements in technology, um, organizationally. Um, you're allowed to, you're able to do things a lot uh, more efficiently. So, Jason, why don't you start us off, and then we'll go Tony, David, and Don. Um, account-based selling. How is it different from account-based marketing? How are you seeing this differentiate um, from the marketing side of things? Yeah, I, I think when you can have your sales team focus on a specific group uh, of companies, um, I think you can get a lot more traction a lot quicker, right? So, with marketing. It's more you're doing a lot more like ad-based stuff, um, trying to target specific types of companies. Um, but you know, then it's kind of more of a catch-all. Not saying it's not a, a bad thing. I think it's definitely good to have the marketing side. But with on um, the sales side, I mean, with the whole you know, evolution of the SDR, we can really go in and hone in and kind of uh, start bringing a lot more deals quicker. I think when you're bringing an account-based approach, uh, things get uh, become a lot more uh, more focused. And you can really grab market share a lot quicker. Um, actually, you know that the article that you and Daniel Barber wrote, the, the total addressable market plus ideal customer profile. When you kind of mix those two together, um, I mean, it, it creates such a it's it's a formula for almost like a your account based approach. You kind of you have to have a account based approach if you want to mix in the total addressable market with your ideal customer profile. I think when you match those two up, then your SDRs have something. To to really go after and sink the teeth into, um, and then it, has, it really helps you kind of control those controllables, right? As you control like the quality of the company you're going to go after, it really has you. If you are focusing your total addressable market, you actually know where you are inside of that goal of how much you can actually uh, attain of that market. So, I think um, on the sales side, it really helps you. Uh, I mean, especially for me, it gives me more of a strategic uh, point of view of how to actually take uh, and approach a market. The market, so I think your execution just becomes a lot more focused. Cool. Um, I agree, and I would, yeah, I would add to that. So obviously, the two are very similar. Both require taking an account 
uh, based approach to all of the strategies that you're using. So instead of just looking at the lead level, which doesn't provide contact, you're starting with the company first that you want to go after. So obviously they're similar in that sense. I think the key differences are the way that each uh, part of the organization actually executes this. Uh, to Jason's point, on the marketing side, it's going to be more through things like digital advertising, even content marketing and email marketing. But the marketing team will take an approach where they're trying to get in front of as many potential decision makers in that account as possible with their marketing efforts. Um, on the flip side, sales is going to be a lot more specific. So um, their approach or their channels are going to be phone, email, and hopefully social media. Uh, they're going to take a really aggressive approach when they're getting into an account, maybe starting with one or two contacts in the company, hitting them really hard with that message, and then maybe migrating to other key decision makers in the company to try to get a meeting. Um, so I think both are really uh, very similar and have the same goal in mind. It's just uh, the two teams will use different channels to reach that same audience. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, I think at the, at the highest level, you have to make sure that uh, both the sales team and the marketing team are aligned on uh, kind of what you're targeting. Um, you know, I know when we've taken this approach, uh, you know, we always, you know, uh, sit down together to make sure that, you know, you're looking at uh, what exact industry you're going after, uh, what uh, size you're going after, and then from there, figuring out what that list of accounts looks like so that both the marketing and the sales team are aligned on the, you know, the names of the companies that you're really focusing on. I think that's an important piece. Yeah, yeah I, I guess from our perspective, there's, uh, what we're learning is that it's very easy to skim. It's very easy to say, oh, we got this one lead from General Electric, and isn't that awesome? But in order to fully tap the potential of a large account takes a massive effort and so just thinking in terms of running a campaign against one account like a General Electric or, or any other large company is uh, it, it's, it's a, a big task and you have to take it seriously and you've got to involve all aspects of your organiz organization. You need to know whether, first of all, whether anybody at General Electric is buying your stuff already and, and leverage that. You need to know if those people are buying your stuff and, and submitting trouble tickets. You need to know if they're trialing your product but haven't bought yet. There's so many things that you can learn about a large account. And then pursuing it takes a marketing effort. It takes uh, a tactical field level marketing. It takes uh, more strategic marketing and messaging. Uh, it takes having the right case studies and the right uh, marketing messages all lined up to go after that one account. So those are just some thoughts on kind of the importance of it and why it takes such an integrated account-focused approach to go after larger accounts where you're trying to sell them a million dollars worth of something. Yeah, and for, for a company your size, selling to a company GE size, you're talking about wrangling together sales, marketing, and even customer success or support. Um, so how does, a, how does a company that's maybe larger, like yours, transition into a model like this that wasn't already in it? Do you have any advice on that? Well, um, so first of all, having a, an account-based approach from a CRM standpoint really helps. Uh, knowing, um, you know, in the old days, as in two or three years ago, we were all very lead-focused, and so I mean, we have situations where we might have 200 leads coming in from the same company, trialing, uh, requesting white papers, doing all these different things. And a salesperson or an SDR might, even, might not even know that. So be, being able to connect the dots is really important. And then the other thought that comes to mind is that Marketing needs to be compensated in terms of revenue, not in terms of number of leads. Getting 50 leads from General Electric is it's, it's a good thing, but what we really want to end up with is a million dollar deal from General Electric. Yeah. And so marketing needs to have that idea in mind and apply the tactics, strategies, uh, messages, to make that happen, not send us a bunch of leads. 
And, and traditional CRM too doesn't really support, I don't think, uh, kind of that account-based model. You know, I think I think that's one of the challenges. You know, in the past, operating from leads, when you have those 200 leads from GE that are sitting in your system, it's very difficult for someone who's an SDR or an account manager uh, that's trying to penetrate GE to find them all in your system. You could you could have a different name spelling. You can have a different you know, GE Inc., G General Electric, you know, it's very difficult uh, to really uh, kind of crack that in the beginning uh, using traditional CRM today, I think. Yeah, so just one example is that um, many marketing automation systems now know to update the contact record, contact records that are associated with an account. And uh, that sort of sort of information is tracked within an opportunity record or multiple opportunity records. So taking a taking an account based approach to your CRM system has a profound impact on your ability to create a picture of everything that's going on within an account, knowing all the cases, knowing all the contacts, knowing their roles, knowing all of the opportunities, knowing all the things they may have purchased in the past. Uh, all of that needs to be integrated in, into a single view so yeah. that you can uh, prospect appropriately. Yeah, and Tony, coming from a, a company that's in the marketing space around this, um, I guess what are your point of views on how uh, you know those two things can align, how marketing is helping with the account-based selling and, and how to transition into that from scratch? Yeah, it's, um, I don't think it's a totally new way of thinking. It's a slightly new way of thinking. Um, I think the key is, you know, I, I keep her back on at part out. I sold marketing automation for several years. And with the rise of all this great lead-based technology, it really tempted marketing teams, especially, but even sales teams and SDR teams to move towards focusing on leads, leads, leads. Uh, the lead could be from a terrible company or could not be a good fit, but hey, we got our lead number, right? And so I think, um, now marketers and sales teams are really realizing the need to focus back on that account uh, approach. And so I think it starts by sales and marketing coming to the table together and having a conversation. You know, obviously first, uh, who do we target? What types of companies? When we come to an agreement on that, uh, we have to sit down and figure out the best way for sales and marketing to continually communicate about who's uh, going to be contacting which accounts on which channel. So if sales and marketing are both taking an account-based approach but don't really know what the owner is doing, that's bad news. And so to David and Don's point about the CRM, that's really key. So for us here at Terminus, um, I meet with my CMO um, at least once a week to talk about our account-based strategy. Uh, we make sure that our sales team is very diligent, uh, diligent about marketing uh, things in Salesforce appropriately so that marketing knows who they are able to touch. So any accounts that are at a, a beginning level stage with our sales team, marketing will be running our own terminus advertising campaign to them, but will not be sending any email marketing messages. They're leaving that to sales. Uh, once sales has gone through their touch points, if they're not able to get in touch with anyone, they'll change it to like a nurture status, and then marketing can begin to nurture them and send more emails and content. So really the key in moving to the strategy is again meeting together, talking about who are we trying to reach, how can we uh, kind of divide up the work here and allow marketing and sales both to take ownership and let's make sure we're planning ahead about who's going to contact which accounts at what time with what frequency. So it just takes a lot of planning. Jason, do you have anything to add? Um, I think everyone touched uh, pretty much on the, the basic, you know, or the, uh, the foundation of, of account based um, yeah. selling and marketing. But, uh, the last, again, it, it just really creates a, a lot of alignment between, you know, customer success, uh, marketing, and sales. And I think you, you start having a, a team or a company that works a lot better together versus marketing doing their thing, sales doing their own thing, and customer success doing their own thing. So I think it, it, once you have an account-based approach, everything runs a lot smoother. Um, kind of like, like they mentioned, if you have downloads coming coming in from a company, it's good for us. Um, we have we work with really large companies, and sometimes some departments don't even know that there are customers. <laughs> so on the customer success side, uh, opportunities for upsell, um, it, it's just a really important thing to have an uh, account-based approach because then the customer success manager is aligned with the uh, the AE, um, and then they can work together to upsell that company. So um, 
yeah, that, that's probably the only thing I'd, I'd like uh, to, I would like to add. But other than that, I think they yeah. covered it pretty well. Cool. Yeah, I, so, I have a couple other things that I can add when you're ready, Max, about yeah. what we do to uh, keep track of these accounts. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in understanding. So, um, and that kind of leads us into the next question here. Uh, what do you? So, I'm guessing everybody here probably uses Salesforce, um, and there's re it's really hard, obviously, you know, to use another CRM um, that can kind of scale the way Salesforce can, especially with the amount of accounts that you're adding, even for you know a company like GE. Um, so, how are you keeping organized? in your CRM, what does that look like? Obviously, you have to be insanely organized with your information to move into an account-based selling model. Um, so what are you doing on the, I guess, organizational side and technological side uh, to power this thing? Well, I mean, like, um, I, can, I can share some experience I had in a past company. I came from Yammer, and what we did at Yammer, you know, we certainly treated anybody that came in as a user, as a customer. Um, so we always we always drove all of our accounts in Salesforce and tied them to the domain of the email that they were at. Um, so that way we always had everybody that came in as a even though they were a free user and we treated them as leads, uh, we actually looked at it as an account. So anybody that was a lead in a database was truly someone that wasn't using our product at all. Um, so you know, and I've kind of I've kind of brought that at, at my you know successive companies of you know when we do create an account. <clears throat> You want to tie the people that are uh, under that email domain to that account. Um, I mean, that's kind of the way to kind of kick it off. Is if you're doing account-based selling, you know, you, that way, if you if you uh, don't look at leads, but rather treat an account and classify that account as a prospect, uh, you can then associate all the leads you have in your system uh, easier uh, to that domain, so that when you are looking at it holistically, you have a way to know everybody that's at the account whether they're, you know, and where, and where they sit in your system uh, under that account rather than leaving them orphaned as leads in your system that, that makes it harder to find. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we do the same thing. And, you know, we might have hundreds of people trialing our product, uh, buying our product as individuals, and getting them all uh, aggregated under, consolidated under a single account is... Uh, very, very important. Uh, and when we do uh, detect that that's going on at a larger prospective account, um, that gives us a chance to do what we call white space mapping. So we calculate the, the delta between the number of individual seats that have been purchased at GE or some other large account and the potential number of knowledge workers at that account. So we call that the white space gap. And so, for example, if you have a 10,000 employee company that has purchased 10,000 seats, that's not, there's not much to be gained there. But if they've purchased 1,000 seats and there are 9,000 left, there's a big gap. So essentially we have reports that sort our accounts in order of that gap. And then the other maybe innovation that we've added over the last year is the ability to track the status of accounts, kind of like the way you would track the status of an opportunity. There are essentially stages going from newly assigned to researching to contacting to qualifying in an account. So that's maybe a new idea. In the past you've done that in a lead and or in an opportunity, but you may not have thought of doing that in an account. So the combination of assigning target accounts, tracking them at the account level, knowing what leads, contacts, opportunities, and cases are associated with that account, and then prioritizing them in terms of the white space gap creates this environment for doing enterprise or, or account-based selling. Um, I love what, uh, that, what technology do you use? Um, yeah. you hear me? I was going to say, especially David. the part of, uh, about his stages of account. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, it's great stuff. I, I really want to know what technology you use outside of just your CRM to put that all together real quick. 
So we're doing the lead matching, and we're doing a lot of uh, additional work to uh, do an even better job of that. Um, so uh, you know, there there are companies that can do that, like Data Hug or uh, Lean Data, and so just being able to associate the lead with an account is necessary but not sufficient. So we already do that. The important thing is being able to write back from the account information to the lead to know what's how important that individual lead is in terms of industry, in terms yeah. of account priority, etc. So that when it comes into an MDR they know what to do with it. So writing from the lead to the account is good, but writing from the account information back to the lead is even better. Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, when I was at uh, Yammer, you know, we, we had a very low barrier to entry, and I think you do this at Nitro too, where it's like you don't want to have to burden people with having to fill out multiple checkboxes and fields when they, when they submit for a trial or they submit to use your product. And so, you know, the challenge from a sales operations perspective is now you just have an email, you have a domain, but you don't know anything else about the company. So, you know, while you might know that GE.com is General Electric, there could be an enormous company in Australia that, you know, may not, you may not recognize the domain, but it could be a great prospect for you if you were able to, you know, use uh, tools that are out there. I, you know, I used to use Inside View, I think Clearbit is another one. Uh, where you can look at the domain and say, oh, okay, GE, they're based in Connecticut, they're this many employees, they're in this industry, and you get that profile information at the account level so that when you're, when you're taking the account-based selling and the account-based marketing approach, you can now say, okay, I want to go after companies that are based in Connecticut, or I want to go after companies that are of this industry or of this size. So, you know, from a sales operations perspective, we have to take all this information that we have at the, at the lead level where you may just have a name or a domain and nothing else and be able to enrich it to enable us to, to take the approach of doing uh, account-based marketing and, and account-based selling uh, in a way that's going to be, you know, provide results. Tony, sorry to cut you off earlier. <laughs> no worries. I just loved what David said about uh, the stages of accounts. We did that with leads really well, but not so much with accounts. Um, well, we use the German Institute Lean Data uh, to organize our CRM. I know that you mentioned that, David. Uh, we use it heavily. It helps us not only to, when we get a new lead, to have it um, route immediately to the account that's already existing, but we can also put all kinds of assignment rules and things in there. Uh, it also shows up on a lead account or contact record so that the sales team, the SDR team, can all be in communication about who's already working an account. So for us, that's been really vital. Um, in terms of technology, I'd also say um, Salesoft has been really great for us. We use Salesoft Prospector on the data intelligence side to help us find contacts. It pulls from LinkedIn, so it does a pretty good job of giving us a feel for company size as well as who the key players are in the company. And then it can push the data right to Salesforce, or then Lean Data takes it and routes it to the right place. So we have a pretty good setup there. And then in terms of contacting those accounts, we use Salesforce other products, Cadence, to help organize there. So we found that not only is it important to be organized in your CRM, but also in that outreach process. So we never want a scenario where two salespeople are both calling into the same company um, or you know, any, any kind of errors or mistakes calling into current accounts. Um, so the, the Cadence tool has been really helpful for us as well to see not only what is already being worked, um, but in helping us to organize our outreach within those target accounts. The, the other thing that I'll just add to that, that was good, Tony. Thanks for uh, elaborating on the lead data piece of it, too, um, is that in the past, I would say that many organizations, even enterprise selling organizations, have been reactive in terms of identifying specific accounts to go after. Um, I think the best way to do it these days is to populate your CRM with the 5,000 accounts that you want to go after and enrich them. And, and so you're starting from a base of essentially the, the complete population of potential accounts that you want to go after. And 
Uh, then when leads come in, they're automatically associated. If you're essentially building your database on the fly, you can miss things. So starting with the accounts that you want to go after, I think, is, is the, the right way to go. And Jason, you guys are highly technological over there. You got a lot of your own data. Um, so how are you keeping organized? Um, how are you assigning these accounts to, to reps even? I know you do a round robin. Um, what does that look like when they're working with an account already? Yeah. Um, so yeah, anytime a, a lead comes in, you know, we'll take their that URL, right, and, um, and we'll append that that URL with with our data, um, and then we'll, we'll essentially just route that inside of, CL, inside of a Salesforce um, to who's already working it. So you know, we get a lot of downloads uh, from our browser extension or white papers, or whatever the the trigger was. Um, and then we're able to track that inside of Salesforce in terms of if we get a lot of uh, people from like Citrix, for example, are downloading stuff, um, then we can say, cool, we have 50 people from Citrix who've downloaded the Insider. Um, so uh, that always gets routed to the AE who's working that account for either potential upsells or knowing that, hey, there's activity in this account, let's go, let's go back in there and talk to whoever their main contact, uh, port of contact was at that company. Um, so that, that's one way we're doing it with, with our, our data. Um, we're also looking at lean data. Uh, I know that name's been thrown around a couple times. Um, so we can get better insight into uh, everything that's happening with a, uh, an account. So right now it's working okay in Salesforce, but definitely we need a lot more visibility because uh, things are definitely falling through the cracks. Um, so it's been, you know, it's, you know, it looks like you know, David and Antonio, they have a lot a more account-based structure. And we're coming from an organization that so definitely we're lead based, uh, so we work a lot of leads, and so we've been transitioning to account based, uh, more of an account based model. So, um, Dave, I'll definitely be calling you and picking your brain on how you guys in that <laughs> transition. Um, and you're one of the companies transitioning, yeah. So I mean, yeah, and that's great. Um, that's great that you're in the in the middle of that. And um, I guess right now you have your. So you mentioned you have your account executives taking those leads that are coming on it that are coming through inbound that are already associated with an account. Yeah, so if, if they're already associated with the account, then that rep, the AE, will, will take that. If, if it's uh, one that the, the sales development team is targeting, um, typically it's, it's who, who has their last touch on that account. Um, and then as we kind of transition more into 100% account base, then obviously we'll just go to that sales development rep who's working on breaking into that account. Okay. And then they... <laughs> go for it. Go for it, then. Uh, uh, so... The other thing that I was just going to throw in here, playing off of what Jason was saying about being sort of lead-centric, is that I think over the last um, three or four years, there's been a transition from MDRs in particular, but SDRs as well, um, and in other words, inbound versus outbound DRs, <laughs> um, focusing on transferring opportunities, not leads. So what that means is that it's part of the MDR's responsibility and the SDR's responsibility to aggregate all of the leads and present the salesperson with, with one opportunity. So now we're thinking of the fact that GE has had 14 different people inquiring, trialing, downloading white papers, doing it, attending webinars, doing all these things as um, one, one opportunity potentially, or maybe it's three, I mean, who knows, but we're creating one bucket of money from all of these different disparate uh, activities or behaviors. And it's the SDR MDR's responsibility to find those people in your system and associate them so that the account manager or the account rep doesn't have to do that work. Exactly. It's a major uh, uh, role and a great service, the concierge yeah. service provided by the XDR. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we're actually going through that process right now but with a, a, a pretty big um, uh, player in the market right now is that the SDR it really is act, you know he's identifying every potential opportunity inside of that account and to be honest an account executive hasn't even been on any of the calls we've been on and he's been on three calls already You're really just uncovering here are the key players here are what the opportunities look like and then again, an account executive hasn't even spoken to these people yet. 
that means then they're sitting down and listening so they can be uh, uh, involved with what kind of conversations are happening. But really, is that SJRM data was really taking the time to cultivate this uh, this lead and look for the opportunities inside of uh, all those opportunities inside of that lead because there's going to be you know five potential uh, teams that we can talk with inside of that company. So yeah, to to see your point, that they definitely spot on. Yeah, I, and I, I can add one more little bit of, uh, if you got a minute, Max. Um, hey, go for so it. The other uh, thing that we've really been working on, and I know Don has been working on this too, is the idea of having account-specific messaging. So, you know, up until recently, we were very focused on doing vertical market-centric messaging, but now we want to take it down one more level and have messaging that appeals to not just a particular persona or a particular, particular vertical, but messaging that appeals to a particular uh, person in that company. So, for example, telling them, did you realize that 43 people within your organization have downloaded a trial of, of our product and that you're eligible for our 25C discount. That's that's account-centric messaging. Yeah. Th those types of messaging really are the most effective at getting the responses back, you know. It's n it's not just something you're shooting at a cadence, you know, with a with a with a you know, I mean you, you try to, to craft the message as personalized as you can, but there's always a limit. But when when you do something like Dave's saying where you can actually pinpoint you know, to the account of the level of usage and, you know, benefit that they're going to get with responding to your email. I mean, you can't ask for a more, you know, uh, a compelling, more message. compelling message to, to reply to. Yeah. That's, That's powerful. powerful. Yeah. And, uh, Tony, so being in the in the business of account-based marketing, um, you, you really never had to do any transitioning. This is something you guys have been doing from, from the start, <laughs> right? Uh, not so much here. Um, of course, I worked for other companies that have, you know, Pardot, SalesOft. Um, when I was at SalesOft, we were kind of making a transition. Um, coming in here, our CMO, Sangram, um, is not a traditional CMO. He is not on talking about attribution. His theory is that almost every uh, lead that we have, almost every deal that we close, is touched by both sales and marketing. Our main goals are to just make sure that we're both working really smoothly together. Uh, so no, when I came in, the sales organization was almost non-existent and had really helped to build things up. And Sanger and I from the very beginning have said, um, we want marketing to be able to support sales and provide air cover. And to do that, sales have to be very organized and you know be able to communicate with marketing uh, which accounts they need to be targeting and how they need to do that. And then from a sales standpoint, um, we're training our SDRs and our sales reps to make sure they're always looking at the account level. So I've worked for organizations in the past where we were given a, a list of 100 leads and it's, the, it's just call these leads and see what you can make happen. But it doesn't provide any context as to what's going on in the account. And so, you know, to David's point, let's say they were already a customer using a free trial of yours. You're just calling a lead and not using that knowledge. You're missing out on a lot of opportunity that you could uh, have. So, um, yeah, we're training our team from the beginning to take an account-based approach when they're prospecting, when they're reaching out, uh, to make sure they understand all the key players in an account, the approximate size, vertical, so that they can tailor their messaging on industry-specific verticals, company-specific based on anything they can find on the company online, and that hopefully, personally, uh, for that particular person, based on what they see on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah, the re yeah and the reason why I'm interested is because... Um, you know, back to David's point about, okay, 43 people downloaded this white paper and you reach out with that as a salesperson. How do you differentiate what marketing sends out and what sales sends out? So yeah. what kind of, con what, what, con what context or information is included? Um, how personal do you go from a marketing point of view compared to a sales point of view? Who sends what yeah. and is there a cadence there between marketing and, and sales? Yeah, so I'll give you an example. Um, at our Flip My Funnel conference we did a couple weeks back, uh, we took the this MarTech stack that Heinz Marketing has created and Singer kind of twisted it to make our own Flip My Funnel stack. 
And so it has about 800 tech companies, mostly marketing and sales technology companies in this stack. And so what we've done is split up each of the sub-verticals. So within the Engage, there could be a group for video marketing companies, and there could be 40 of those companies. So sales rep will make a cadence. They'll start by reaching out over social to try to make a personal connection. Then they'll start an email and phone call cadence with some other social touches mixed in. And the messaging will be something like, hey, we're currently working with X company in your vertical that does video marketing, and we thought that you may also have value, uh, see value in this as well. Specifically, I saw on LinkedIn X, Y, and Z about you. So we take both the vertical that they're in and, and mention a customer that's similar. Also try to take a little bit of a personal approach and go through that process with them. Simultaneously, marketing is running digital ad campaigns tailored to all of the key decision makers in that account, not just the ones sales are targeting. So marketing is helping to build consensus and brand awareness in the account while sales is reaching out to one or two contacts. Then, once sales goes through that whole process, if they haven't got any touch points, after that point, they'll put them in what we call kind of sales nurture uh, status, and then marketing will take over and start to create content and emails and things and be a little more heavy in their touch points. Sales is a lot more specific. Um, right now, from a marketing standpoint, um, I would say the messaging is a little bit personalized, but more so on an industry kind of level versus specific account level. But for us, we sell to a lot of S&B and mid market companies, so it may not make sense. You know, if you're selling to a GE, you might want your message for marketing to be really specific to GE. But since we have hundreds of potential companies we would sell to, we can't get quite that specific. Uh, so again, marketing's message will be more based on industry or kind of job title in terms of their messaging. Cool. And, and Jason, how do you have this split up between your team right now? Because you guys, I mean, you're doing a considerable considerable amount of outbound, probably eating your own dog food, right, or drinking your own champagne yeah. or whatever expression you want to use. <laughs> champagne sounds more appetizing. Um, yeah. That's why we're actually, you know, with the launch of the new mobile product, we're, we're actually, just like what Tony said, her approach is very similar to what we're going to be implementing where we have a specific vertical inside the mobile uh, tech space, and we're going to be targeting each of those uh, verticals, and, you know, what we're going to leverage more of a competitive play, kind of like we'd be interested to know who's, who's using your competitor or who's dropped your competitor, um, so we're going to have that, that play. At the same time, marketing is going to hit those specific verticals uh, with messaging. Um, so again, going back to what Tony was saying, you know, I know they maybe use a very uh, specific approach where it's like outbound is going to go after these companies with these titles, and then marketing is also going to do campaigns against those those specific titles uh, in those those companies. So we're actually going to be doing a very similar approach uh, with the mobile uh, product we just launched, and um, I mean, just with the success we've seen doing that. Uh, before with our technology, um, our technology plays. I, I think it's going to lend very well to mobile. And so we'll have a very similar approach that Tony just uh, just uh, outlined. Excited to see how the uh, transition goes for you uh, as you're in, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. It's you know, like you said, we we're very outbound heavy. Um, yeah. And I would love to see a little more. Uh, I think the account based approach is going to help us move up market. I think it's very important for companies to want to move up market. And go after the big companies to really implement an account-based approach. Um, I think it's going to be a lot less messy uh, if you go that that route uh, versus just outbounding and trying to hit everybody, anyone with people, without thinking about what is your approach and what's your objective. You'll have to keep us posted on the uh, LinkedIn community and the sales hacker community on LinkedIn. Let us know how it goes. I'll, I'll do a little diary of sorts to kind of keep people what we're, 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 we're bumping up against the challenges. Perfect. And you know who to speak to. You got some some people here who can help you out. Um, okay. We got some questions from the audience, uh, so we'll do. Um, let's go with this one first. So, uh, Don, um, your account-based selling approach. Who owns the SDR team? Sales or marketing? What are you guys going with? Uh, it's sales. Uh, SDR reports into sales. Um, usually, the, ha the the handoff for us is uh, once the lead comes in. You know, it's a marketing responsibility to do the lead generation. Uh, once the leads are in the system, it falls under the SDR team. SDR team is under is under sales. Okay, uh, Tony, 
Um, you mentioned it takes a lot of planning weekly me uh, weekly meetings to make this effective. How much time is spent on planning versus executing on a weekly basis? And how? And I guess I'll add to that. How are you planning? Is that one on ones or what does that look like? Yeah, great question. Um, it's funny coming from other companies that did not take this approach. Uh, we probably spend more time on planning, but I think when we actually run the campaign, it's a lot quicker to get the campaign running and they're a lot more effective. Um, I wouldn't say it has to take tremendous time. Um, my CMO and I meet for at least 30 minutes a week. Sometimes if we have a, a new campaign, we're going to try and we're practicing some new messaging and really thinking through, hey, let's try something new here and uh, it may be an hour, but usually 30 minutes to an hour a week. Um, and making sure we're on the same page about the campaigns we're currently running, trying to come up with new ideas about how we can work together on new accounts, new verticals. Uh, say my team says, hey, we really want to reach out to X vertical, then I can go during our weekly meeting and say, all right, we're going to start a campaign in a couple weeks to these types of companies. Can you help to provide um, some content that's more specific? So it's it's not intense planning, it's more just meeting to make sure that we're on the same page about what we're doing and strategizing together on how we want to reach certain types of companies. Excellent. And David, um, compensation model around account-based selling. What, um, what have you put together for a pretty large organization and, and is it attached to an account-based selling model or is, it, um, or is it something different, something that's just completely segmented from that? Um, so this is a, it's kind of a complicated subject, but the, the short answer is that um, we've broken up our SDR, XDRs, uh, account managers, and account executives into pods. So they, they, they're broken into little teams. And so there's an SDR and an account manager that work four essentially on a dotted line, an account executive. And they're compensated on the success of the pod. So uh, for a large account, we may be doing prospecting in a particular division. We may be doing renewals. Uh, the account manager might be doing renewals. Uh, the account manager needs to say, hey, uh, this renewal, there, there's a lot of white space in this account, so I need to bring in an account executive, the account executive, to help me to move them from just renewing to renewing with an upsell. So uh, the short answer, I guess, is that they're compensated on the success of the account, not on some individual transaction. Okay. Does that help? And, yeah. and that's the the individual rep that's working that account or the team of people that are working that account? They're, all, all of them are uh, incented to maximize the success of their pod and their, their accounts, the accounts that they're assigned. Very interesting. Um, and then with it, the last question for you, Jason. Um, so you're doing the transition right now. How long did it take for you to see your early results and I guess what prompted it? Um, you know, I, I think we're, what prompted it was that outbound team, so that's kind of funny, so what prompted it was my team, we have to, we're at the point where we have to produce so much net new it feels like all the time, it's a lot of pressure and, and we're, we've been spending a lot of time building uh, this pipeline but then what happens is if your team, if the AE team gets used to net new, that's all they want. So what we noticed is what all the pipeline that we were building month over month, a lot of it was disappearing uh, because it's like, you know, a county executive can only handle so many accounts. So it can only uh, think about that and be top of mind of, of a certain number of accounts. Um, and so we started noticing that a lot of stuff was kind of just disappearing or was uh, in nurture, but there were solid accounts that so they were like perfect fit. So that's what initially prompted it for us was that we wanted to be able to uh, really make sure we're hitting those, those really key accounts, those those perfect fits and wins, um, and that we weren't just letting them disappear. So that was kind of the, the what, what kind of triggered it for us is uh, to make sure that we're always cultivating those perfect companies, that, that the ones that we really want to sell to. Um, and you're seeing results? 
early on? Uh, yeah, I think I mean it's very. I think it's still early to say we're seeing massive results, but we're I think for the ones that we, that we are focusing uh, as an account based approach, I think we're we're seeing some, some good traction. Um, but I think it's still probably a little too early to be able to say, yeah, we're having this much success. It's amazing. Um, I think organization wise, uh, organizationally wise, yeah, it's, it's a big difference. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all for uh, taking time and helping us out here and um, answering these questions and having this great conversation with us. So uh, thanks to our panelists. Thanks for everyone for chiming in today. If you have any more questions, um, write them in at hashtag SHWebinar on Twitter. We'll try and get them answered for you. We'll have this recording posted on saleshacker.com um, later this week. Uh, and we'll have the podcast version available as well. So you'll have video, audio, and then um, hopefully some questions uh, separately that we can answer. But um, you know where to reach everyone if you need to. Everybody's on LinkedIn. Uh, thanks again for joining us. And thanks a lot, guys, for uh, thanks. Thanks. thanks, Max. Take care.